uh, what's up? Today, uh, I want to show you guys um, a couple techniques in vellum that are, in my opinion, not super obvious uh, what they do when you're getting started. Um, but uh, once you kind of realize how they work, uh, they're actually pretty easy and they can create some really uh, super cool detailed effects like this uh, sort of crumpling we got going on here. Um, if you can see, and this will be more clear later, but there are certain areas that are much more tightly folded than others. Um, and that's being controlled with um, the bend stiffness. Um, so we're going to look into that. And then we're also going to uh, take a look at plasticity, which basically makes is making this object hold its shape. All right, so let's uh, check it on out. Okie doke, here we are in Houdini, and let's just do the old usual geo node. And we're just gonna run some tests here. I'm not really like gonna um, go into super detail about how to create a specific effect or anything. I'm just gonna show you guys like roughly what these, uh, what these things do. All right, so let's put down a grid. El gridito, and we'll make it one by one and a hundred and a hundred um zoom out here set this to flat wire and we can create a vellum cloth vellum configure cloth All right. and the vellum solver Doing its thing. And in the solver, we'll just uh, turn off gravity. And we'll dive in and we'll make a little pop force. Uh, pop force, just like uh, you can just think of it as turbulence. Uh, let's set this to point once, not too strong. Yada yada. I'm going to leave most of this the same. I was, I've been putting this to triangle stretch lately. I just think it looks cool. So I don't know if that's right but that's what's going on so you can see uh the bend stiffness and yeah so but uh, you can see here the stretch stiffness they set very high like this is infinite essentially this is like infinitely stiff and then down here you can see the multiplier actually is quite low so the bend stiffness is actually um much lower to begin with so you have essentially to start with a, a bendy but not stretchy um object and it is worth mentioning that every, really everything, you could set this pretty much to infinite. I mean, here, I'll show you the, uh, the default here, what we got while I'm just yammering away here. Um, so this is what the low bend stiffness. This is what the default bend stiffness. And you can see it's, you know, it's cloth-like. It's like you're getting these folds and, you know, it, it moves like a cloth and that's, that's what you pay for, right? That's the, that's the desired effect. The thing is, um, what kind of got me is that if you actually set this to infinitely stiff, it's still not, you know, it still bends. It's like, it's not, um, it's not completely stiff as you might expect, right? Um, and that kind of just, I, I, I was curious about that. And actually, if you want to increase it a bit, you can go in here and uh, just knock slip, slip, slip. And that'll give you more stiffness. Uh, you can see it's still going to bend. And you can knock that up and, you know, crank it up and get um, completely stiff objects. But it's just, unless that's really all you're looking for, then it's going to kind of mess with the rest of the objects uh, in the simulation that aren't supposed to be stiff. Because, yeah, see, it's, uh, it's definitely stiffer. Um, but it is still bending, right? And it's at infinite stiffness. Remember that. It's, the stiffness is set to infinite. And it's still bending. So basically what that made me realize is that like vellum is at its core. It's like a bendy solver. Like it like solves bendy things. Everything in vellum is bendy. Like hairs are bendy. Cloths are bendy. Soft bodies are bendy. Um, grains are not bendy, but they kind of... 
they're kind of squishy, I guess. So, um, but I think grains are just in here because the way they're calculated happens to be similar. Um, anyways, I'm going to put this down to three for speed. Um, yeah. So, the, okay. So then that's a, that's at a high uh, bend stiffness. So what if we put this to like infinitely not stiff? This is infinitely bendy here. And you can see that it basically just gets like super crumpled, which to me, I think looks awesome. I love this look. And this is pretty low res, I will say this, um, this mesh could be higher. Super cool, right? Yeah, look at that, it's awesome. And then if you put that through a Ellen post process, hit it with the subdivides, the cat moles, um, you know, still kind of low res, but pretty cool. Definitely, uh, definitely like a much, uh, much crumplier look. So I'm actually going to screenshot this a screenshot. This is a good way to do tests. Uh, I, I always just use, I, I don't know when windows put in the screenshot uh, function, but it's great. You hit windows shift S and then you just drag out and it'll go to your clipboard and then you just click on it in, when it pops up and then, then you can just open it in here. You can draw on it and stuff and you can go like, uh, I don't know, negative infinite stiff, whatever. Okay. So that's negative infinity versus positive infinity, which we saw, which is, you know, we'll just do it again just for posterity so we can see them side by side. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Get out of here. Get out of here. And you can see, so essentially what the stiffness is doing, uh, if you look at it here is it's, it's bend stiffness really controls like what's around it. Right. So like this has negative, negative, uh, zero bend stiffness, like at all. So you can see that like nothing around anything else is affected by what's around it. Right. Like this one is like going this way. This one's going this way. This is kind of flat up here, but like then these guys just totally break off. Like it's really dependent on what's affecting it. And I think that what the difference between the two is, is that with a higher bend stiffness, it's not that it doesn't make it, it's not that it won't bend. It's that the bendiness is sort of more spread out. Like it's less like, no, yeah, it's more spread out. All right. So it's less, it's, it's less detailed as the end result. So what's cool is that you can actually and that crumple look is cool. That crumple look is very cool. But what you want to do is, um, what you want to do is be able to control the amount of bend stiffness, right? So what you can do in here, in the cloth, sorry, is go to no, where it says no scaling. You can set that to scale by attribute. And I actually like to set this uh, back down to like around, I think this is the default. I'm going to do that. Um, scale by attribute, and then it'll open up this bend stiffness uh, attribute here. And so what you can do really is pretty much anything. So you can go to attribute paint, attribute paint, and you can paint on the, where is it? Attributes, bend stiffness, right? And then you can essentially paint the stiffness. So if I just start painting, I guess like this, start painting some stuff here, right? I'll paint this whole color. Actually, I'm gonna make it super obvious, right? Okay, got that. And then we go down here. And if we control middle mouse and see the bend stiffness, it'll visualize that, create a visualizer for us in here. Which is nice. And we can also, oh, I made these earlier. We can make this, uh, I made this bend marker, which essentially is the same thing, but instead of color, like this is set to color, it's set to a number. So you can go in and you can see um, match to the color 
you know, this bend stiffness is one and this one is zero. And this is the new min and max, right? So, um, and let's run it again. Slowly, slowly we go. Cool. Now you can see what's happening is that where we don't have bend stiffness, right? The blue represents zero stiffness and you can see that these red parts really are not, they're not really bending. Like they're, you know, they're flowing kind of like the, like the noise, but uh, it doesn't have any of these crumples, right? So that's pretty cool. Like you can go in and you can create some, some pretty cool stuff with that. Like uh, off the top of my head, I would say like, you know, like this called crumple. It's like a, you could kind of create a crumpled paper. I didn't take the time to do that because I don't really need any crumpled paper right now, but it put ideas in my head for the future. You know, if I ever do need crumpled paper, I know what to do. Um, so that's with the attribute paint, right? So that's that. But of course in Houdini, the idea is to make everything um, what's the word? Mm, procedural. So we can obviously also do that. So if we read the line this into a point vop, now we can basically go into the point vop and we can bind export um, the uh, bend stiffness. So we call this bend stiffness. All right, bend stiffness. Uh, and then now we can just do anything. Like we can just put down like a, a turbulent noise. Uh, ding and ding and turn on the visualization. And my F's go up. Where's my visualization? There we go. Oh, wait. There we go. So you can see that the uh, turbulent noise is affecting the bend stiffness. Now, I will say this is cool, but it is, it's very unpredictable. Like this does not behave, at least for me, the way I would expect it to. So it pretty much all behaves like it has some stiffness, which is a shame because I thought like it would crumple in between these little parts here, you know, and kind of get this crazy thing. But I realized that like, when you do it like this, you basically need to give some space between, like you need to have basically like little areas that are um, stiff and not stiff. And I'm sure this is working, but the areas are too small to really be able to see. So like I said before, like bend stiffness really affects what's around it. And there's just too much detail in here for it to really be able to um, do what it needs to do. So if we go in here, actually, if we go up here, oh yeah, actually we'll go in here. Meh. Uh. Go in here, um, create, I found these patterns, which are super cool. Um, the crackle, I mean, sounds great, right? Crackle. Um, crackle needs a UV to work. So let's go up and we'll just do a UV project. Bing, bing, All right? Good to go. Um, I'll go in here. Now we have the UV right here. Feed it the UV. Crackle out to bend stiffness. Uh, is this working? This should be working. Oh, I remember. Um, for crackle to work, you need to set the UVs to uh, points. As this is a point VOP, it's not reading the vertexes, right? It's reading the points. So this should work now. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, Okay, so like I said, you need to give it some space. So you can increase the softness here. Um, right, okay. So now we got these cells, right? We'll do two and two. You can see these cool like cells. This, this, uh, this node's really cool. Um, and then, so if you increase this width enough, now if we go up, and we run this, we should see this working correctly. Oh, hang on. Hold up. Get out of here. Yeah, and now we can see that it is uh, bending in the place where we want it to bend. 
Now we've got these big cellular structured things that are solid while the rest is bendy, which is, I don't know what that looks like, but it's cool that you can do that, right? And it's, it looks pretty cool. It's some kind of like, I don't know, sports equipment or something. You got the hard shell part and then you got the soft bendy part. Okay, so that's uh, that's working. If we look at the bend stiffness, we can see that that's corresponding, right? You know, and then um, and then of course you could just paint on top of this as well, um, right? So this is this is the combination of the two basically. Um, if I reset all changes here, yeah. So then if I go, is this paint blue or red? Yeah, this paint's red. So I could go in here and uh, basically make tweaks and I could hollow this out. If I want to get rid of this whole guy in here, I could do that. This runs a lot quicker when you aren't selecting the vellum solver. Boom, right? Cool. And I'm just going to go in here and make a pop attract uh, just because it's a quicker way to show. I would try, I don't think I need this anymore. I'm gonna bypass that. Uh, the force, let's do a force skill one, gold do a point one. And pop track's pretty powerful. Like it's a strong effect, so this might be too powerful, but uh, we'll see. And then I'm gonna, what the hell did I just do? Oh my God, come on, so ridiculous. Um, I'm just going to pin some of these points. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. I think that's about it for Ben Stiffness. I think we get it. All right. So let's um, pin these points. These guys. Boom. I'm going to set this to soft. Um, and then we're going to talk about plasticity. So let's look at this effect that I want to do here. So, and, okay. So this is actually important. There are two, two plasticities here. There's one for stretch. And there's one for bend. And we're gonna worry about the bend one right now. And you just have to be careful about this, um, especially you know when you're using both of them, because I, have, I can't even tell you how many times I've set the wrong settings for the wrong one and then like lost an hour because I was trying to figure out like what the hell was wrong. And then I couldn't remember my settings and you know, it's ridiculous, but. So with the bend stiffness, we have three settings here. We have the threshold, uh, we have the rate, and we have the hardening. So the threshold basically is going to look at the constraints, see how much they've bent, and basically decide once it you know once it's under this uh, over this threshold, I believe. Yeah, once it's over this threshold, so I like to set this very low. Um, basically, it will enact these other two uh, things. And the rate you can think of is essentially the speed at which it hardens. So think if you picture like wax you know, wax is in its wax form, but then it melts a little and it becomes a liquid and it kind of changes form, right? But then when the heat goes away, it reforms into hard wax. And you can think of the rate as basically like how quickly that wax would turn back into a solid. So I'm also, I'm also going to put this very high. I want to, I want this rate, I want it to, I want this to re-wax very quickly. And then the hardening, a value of one basically means that this uh, these uh, constraints will be just as stiff as they were before they moved and anything over one um, is going to make them stiffer you know it's going to multiply the stiffness uh, by this number so I'm going to crank that up too all right so what I've got going here is inside here I've got this uh, pop attract um, it's set fairly low it's set to 0 0.1 um, and then at frame 24 it turns off it goes down to zero by frame 32 and then after that any residual motion is just um, the velocity that uh, was already on the points so the points are basically going to resolve themselves with no external uh, you know information and so I've already simmed this uh, and we can see here it goes up and it turns off and it kind of flops around and bada boom bada bing. So this is what we're left with on frame 144. And this is without plasticity. So this basically represents this cloth turning back into cloth. 
um, after it's bent, it kind of re returns to its original cloth-like form, right? Um, you can see, you know, here it's super bendy, and then here it's kind of straight. It's kind, you know, it's it's still still bent, obviously, because of the velocities and stuff like that. But especially these areas here, they're sort of starting to reform. This one might be. I think that's just, you know the physics of it that it still looks like that but okay so then we'll try it again with the plasticity enabled and we'll see the difference between the two so we'll go into cloth uh, bend enable plasticity still got the settings and let's just uh, what was post? Uh, we'll let this run Okay, that is simmed, and let's just compare here. We'll go to frame 144. Uh, what's our angle here? Not that one, this one. So it's sort of like this. And you can already see, like, it's much more um, deformed. Um, right? That's the same side, I believe. Um, so this one, what it did here was it... It got bent, and then the velocities kept pushing it sort of up around this way, and so this cloth piece flew forward. But here, because it had been so bent by this point, it just stays. It just stays bent here, right? It doesn't try to correct itself by, like, flopping up this way, which is what the other one would have done. The other one looks like it kept going, it was a bit bent along here, and then it flopped itself back into shape. But our hardened plastic one here doesn't flop itself back into shape. It keeps going with the physics, but it also maintains this wrinkle that we've got uh, here. And this is nicer. All right? So we've got this hardening effect. And this is where the crumpling comes in because now. This just is shaped like this. Like this is what it looks like. And now any further deformations are going to be, you know, based on this shape now because this is its new shape. This is its new hard shape. And you can see in here just how nice these little crumples look. They're great. And they're they're in there. It's like a wax paper now, you know. There. Yeah, both sides look great, you know? And these ones, are, this is just flat here because this is where I, I pinned it. Um, and that's just so it wouldn't fly away um, for this example. Um, yeah, um, so that's basically it uh, for plasticity. And then, of course, we've got this. Uh, this is what I did, came up with earlier. And you can see that it folds into shape and then it just stays doesn't go back down and when I ran this without plasticity basically it unfolded itself it still was a little deformed because it had been so so extremely deformed but it did not look it did not hold this shape um, yeah so that is Ben's stiffness and plasticity hopefully that's helpful for you guys um, I know when I first started doing vellum I did not really understand what those did um, maybe that's just me being stupid but um, yeah, you know, I feel like all information is good information. So hopefully there's something you could pick up from this. And uh, yeah, if you got any questions, ask me in the comments. And, you know, see you next time. Hope you have a great day. All right. Goodbye.